This is the story of how corn came into the world. Long, long ago, in a beautiful part of this country, there lived an Indian and his wife and children. He was poor and found it hard to provide enough food for his family. But though needy, he was kind and content, and always gave thanks to the great creator for everything that he received. His eldest son, Wounds, was likewise kind and gentle, thankful of heart, and he longed greatly to do something for his people. Time came that Wounds reached the age when every Indian boy fasts so that they may see a vision of the spirit that is to be his guide through life. Wound's father built him a little lodge apart so that the boy might rest there, undisturbed during his days of fasting. Then Wounds withdrew to begin his solemn rite. On the first day, he walked alone in the woods, looking at the flowers and plants and filling his mind with the beautiful images of growing things so that he might see them in his night dreams. He saw how the flowers and herbs and berries grew, and he knew that some were good some were for medicine, some healed wounds, and some cured sickness, and his heart was filled with an even greater longing to do something great for his family and his tribe. Truly, thought he, the great spirit made all things, to him we owe our lives, but could he not make it easier for us to get our food than hunting and catching fish? I must try, I must find out in my vision. So Wounds returned to his lodge and fasted and slept. On the third day he became weak and faint. Soon he saw a vision of a young brave coming down from the sky and approaching the lodge. He was clad in rich garments of green and yellow colors. On his head was a turf of knotted green plumes, and all his motions were graceful and swaying. I am sent to you, O Wounds, said the sky stranger. The great spirit who made all things in sky and earth has seen your fasting and knows how you wish to do good for your people, and that you do not sing strength in war, nor the praise of warriors. I am sent to tell you that the good you do for your kindred. Arise and wrestle with me, for only overcoming me may you learn the secret. Wounds, though he was weak from fasting, felt courage grow in his heart and he arose and wrestled with the stranger but soon he became weaker and exhausted and the stranger seeing this smiled gently on him and said my friend this is enough for once i will come again tomorrow and he vanished as suddenly as he had appeared the next day the stranger came and wounds felt himself weaker than before nevertheless he rose and wrestled bravely then the stranger spoke a second time my friend, he said, you have courage. Tomorrow will be your last trial. And he disappeared from Wounds' sight once again. On the third day, the stranger came as before and the struggle was renewed. And Wounds, though fainter in body, grew stronger in mind and will. And he determined to win or perish in the attempt. He exerted all of his power and lo, and a while he prevailed and overcame the stranger. Oh, wounds, my friend, said the conquered one. You have wrestled manfully. You have met your trial well. Tomorrow I shall come again, and you must wrestle me for one last time. You will prevail. Do then strip away my garments and throw them away. In the morning, wounds' father came to him with food. My son, he said, you have fasted long. It is seven days since you have last tasted food, and you must not sacrifice your life. The master of life does not require that. My father replied the boy, wait until the sun goes down tomorrow. For a certain reason I wish to fast until that hour. Very well, said the old man. I shall wait until that time arrives, when you feel inclined to eat. And his father went away. The next day at the usual hour, the sky stranger came again. And though wounds had fasted seven days, he felt a new power arise within him one he had never felt before. He grasped the stranger with superhuman strength and threw him down. He took from him his beautiful garments, and finding him dead, buried him in the softened earth, and did all else that he had been directed. He then returned to his father's lot, and partook sparingly of food. There he abode for some time, but never did he forget. Weeks passed. The summer was drawing to a close, 
One day Wounds asked his father to follow him. He led him to a distant meadow. There, in the place where the stranger had been buried, stood a tall and graceful plant with bright colored silken hair and crown knotted green plumes. Its stalk was covered with waving leaves and from there grew its side clusters, ears of corn, golden and sweet, each ear closely wrapped in its husks. There, it is my friend, shouted the boy joyously. It is Maduan, the Indian corn. We need no longer depend on hunting, so long as this gift is planted and cared for. The great spirit has heard my voice, and he has sent us food. Then the whole family feasted on the ears of corn and thanked the great spirit who gave it. So that is how Indian corn came to the world.